Welcome back to Nucleotide Metabolism on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the regulation of pyrimidine biosynthesis in bacteria and humans. And as I mentioned in the previous video, where we actually discussed the pathway for the synthesis of UTP and CTP pyrimidines, the regulatory control point at least the committed step in the pathway that's regulated allosterically is different between animals and E. coli, or just bacteria in general. So let's talk about the first two steps in this pathway. Recall that bicarbonate, along with the amine from glutamine and phosphate from ATP, are going to be converted to carbamyl phosphate by carbamyl phosphate synthetase. And then carbamyl phosphate can be converted to n carbamyl aspartate by aspartate transcarbamylase, abbreviated ATCase. Now, both of these steps, these enzymes, are present in bacteria and humans, animals. Uh, these are v basically very conserved steps in different species, but the regulation of the pathway differs. For example, let's talk about animals first. This would include us, obviously. The allosteric enzyme in this pathway for humans is carbamyl phosphate synthetase. So this is the enzyme that humans, or we, heavily regulate. And what we'll find is that the allosteric regulation is both positive and negative. So how do we activate this enzyme and what's the logic of it? Well, phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate, or PRPP, and ATP both activate this enzyme. Well, let's think about the logic of that. Well, for PRPP, it makes sense to activate this enzyme because if we got lots of PRPP present, that's the precursor to all nucleotides regardless of whether it's pyrimidines here or purines in uh, one of the other videos that we talked about it. So PRPP is going to activate carbamyl phosphate synthetase. That makes sense. ATP is going to activate this. Why is that? Well, let's think about it. The body wants a natural way, or at least cells want a natural way to balance purines and pyrimidines. Because if you have too many of one of those, that's not a good thing. You want them to be relatively balanced, purines with pyrimidines. So the reason ATP is going to activate this enzyme, because this enzyme is for pyrimidine synthesis, is because if you have lots of ATP floating around, presumably you've got a lot of purines. And perhaps you don't have enough pur uh, pyrimidines. So ATP activates this enzyme to jumpstart pyrimidine biosynthesis. So ATP is present in high amounts. You've got a lot of purines. Let's get the pyrimidines up to par with the amount of purines that we've got. Okay? Now, this enzyme is also negatively regulated by UDP and UTP. Well, that makes sense because it's kind of a feedback form of inhibition. Remember, uh, the ultimate products of this pathway, other than CTP, are UMP. We do form a UDP in the process and UTP. These are sort of could be considered end products of the pathway. So if we've already got plenty of these things present, like UDP and UTP, we don't need to make more pyrimidines, presumably, okay, if we've already got plenty of these. And honestly, if we've already got plenty of UTP, this enzyme can be inactivated and we can still make CTP, okay? Because if there's plenty of UTP, we can just use this enzyme to convert to CTP. So the point is, if we've got plenty of these, then presumably we've got plenty of pyrimidines, so we can shut off the committed step in pyrimidine synthesis. So that's the logic as to why we regulate this enzyme in this way. Now, if we switch over to E. coli or bacteria, their allosteric regulatory point is aspartate transcarbamylase, or ATCase, and it's also regulated in a similar way. So again, ATP is going to allosterically activate ATCase, um, and again, the logic for that's the same reason as it was over here. If you've got plenty of purines present, then you're going to have plenty of ATP. Okay, and again, these bacteria, just like our cells, like to balance the amount of purines and pyrimidines that they have. So if they've got a lot of purines present, you've got a lot of ATP, let's activate the committed step in pyrimidine synthesis to bring the pyrimidine amount back up to par with purines. Okay, also, 
it's negatively regulated by CTP, which also makes sense considering that CTP is another end product of this pathway. So if you've already gone through this pathway and you have plenty of CTP, it's probably assumed you have plenty of UTP as well since UTP comes or is converted into CTP. So CTP will feedback inhibit this enzyme allosterically and turn off pyrimidine synthesis. If you've already got plenty of pyrimidines, then turn off the committed step in pyrimidine biosynthesis. And so these are going to be the major regulatory control points in primidine synthesis. But the interesting thing, of course, is that depending on what type of organism you are, that d changes which enzyme of these is regulated. All right, so hopefully this form of regulation makes sense. It's a little bit less complicated than purine regulation, but that's just because pyrimidines are a little bit less complicated. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.